Hello, Anthony. Hello, Claudine. Today we're talking about foreign bank accounts. And what is a foreign bank what account? What is a foreign what bank is, account? What isn't? It's important, uh, especially because of the Bank Secrecy Act of 1970, which we've talked about before, mm-hmm. but a little quick sum up. Yeah, the Bank Secrecy Act of 1970, predominantly, if you look at it, it involves mostly domestic banks. These are where you get your suspicious activity reports. And so it defines the banks that are subject to the Bank Secrecy Act by saying, hey, look, if you're regulated by this agency, this, this, or this, you are a bank. Now, the issue comes, well, all these foreign banks aren't regulated by any of these U.S. administrative agencies. So what's the definition of a foreign bank. It's really not in the statutes. It's no. not in the Bank Secrecy Act. And because of the Bank Secrecy Act, uh, that's where the FBAR was born. Is that right? That is right. That's where it comes from. The report of foreign bank accounts is born in the Bank Secrecy Act of 1970. It's been around since 1970, but has really only got attention since about 2006 or seven. Mm-hmm. And it's sort of a gray area because you don't see it in the laws or regulations. It's like... There's no actual list of this is bank account, this is not. And if you look at the instructions, it's a little misleading too. Mm -hmm. And we'll be doing a video on some of the the odd, the things things that are odd laws uh, of the IRS. What what is treated as law, and there are web pages that are basically treated as As law, law. and videos too. Yes. Some of those videos we watch on IRS videos are treated as somewhat binding. Um, so we're going to we're going to talk about those in a, in a later video. So the first thing we'll talk about is gambling. It's mm-hmm. the court of U.S. versus home. Yep. And or hum. 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 Home. Uh, taxpayer that gambled online. That's right. And the IRS was saying a, the account he used should have been reported on his FBAR. That's right. He's saying it should not. Right. So the taxpayer gambled online. He sent money to his online account. Uh, so he could gamble. Now, these were all offshore uh, gambling sites. Okay. Because I don't think you can have a U.S. gambling site so. unless it might be at an Indian casino or Las Vegas. I'm not sure on that. But he did send it there so he could gamble. And he had three different, three different ones he sent it to. And for 2006 and 2007, he never reported it on an FBAR form. Mm-hmm. And so the government went. And they were kind enough to assess him... Three non-willful penalties for 2006, one non-willful, non-willful penalty for 2007, $10,000 each for a total of $40,000. Now, this is one of the interesting things. The IRS has changed its non-willful guidance. So if there's multiple non-willful penalties in a year, they will assess just one. Huh. But for the older cases, no, that was the old rules. So we're going to enforce the old rules. Uh, so oh, that's, that's messed up. So this is, you know, it's $40,000. Mm-hmm. And I guess Mr. Hum. Uh, could, and if he's listening or watching, if we would be happy to correct it. Uh, and I would say this, he, t- he went and took it to him. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people will just sort of roll over, pay it. Hey, look, it's going to be cheaper to pay it than fight it. Mm-hmm. And it probably would have been. In this case, you know, taking a circuit court, uh, this case, uh, he lost in district court. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty demoralizing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's a loss in district court. The, uh, and uh, now he has to go decide, well, do I throw good money a- after bad? You know, this is a really hard one mm-hmm. to 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 fight. And, and if someone came in to me asking me my opinion, I would say I would expect to lose. If really? you want to fight, oh yeah, I would totally expect to lose. Yeah, totally. Uh, because you're really looking at um, to you're really what the what the courts look at is something called the Chevron deference standard. It was in a 1984 case, mm-hmm. and basically it says, you know what, if if a uh, if an administrative agency creates a rule, we're just going to go with it. We're going to assume it unless it's unreasonable to us. But that's such a meaningless standard because what's unreasonable to me is certainly not what's unreasonable to <laughs> uh, a government employee. So now it gets to the Ninth Circuit Court. Mm-hmm. What is Ninth Circuit Court? The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, they're a little bit out there sometimes. They usually do their own thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, not always... In ways I agree. Mm -hmm. This is one I completely agree with. So this is where I'm saying, yeah, that Ninth Circuit. Yeah, way to go. They're (laughs) mavericks. Now this is, instead of loose cannons, now they're mavericks, right? (laughs) Uh, So this is one where the court says, hey, government, um, you know, looking through the Bank Secrecy Act 1970, you never bothered to define foreign bank. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're looking at the instructions. We're looking at your regulations. And you still never defined it. So what we're going to do, and this is sort of contra what, uh, of a case we just talked about last mm-hmm. last month uh, of Eschel uh, versus the IRS, where that circuit, the D.C. Circuit Court 
chastised the tax court for looking at a dictionary definition. Yep. So in this case, the 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 ninth ninth circuit says no. Let's look at the dictionary. dictionary. <laughs> so what is what does a bank mean? What is a bank? Well, you know what? An online gambling account is not a bank. It just it just doesn't fit in there. Mm-hmm. So we're going to say it, it's not a bank. The government says, well, okay, maybe it's not a bank, but it's a foreign financial institution. Okay. And the circuit says, I don't think so. But by the way, you're raising this for the first time on appeal, so we're not going to consider it. Oh. So okay. you that, lose. that wasn't included in it the wa- original. It fight. wasn't originally. So um, there's a no FR requirement. Penalties are gone away. Go away. Good for him. I don't think this is something that the uh, government would want to appeal to the Supreme Court. Because they have bad facts, mm-hmm. and really the, the better fix to this um, is quite simple: <laughs> just go and write some regulations. Right. A foreign bank account is an online gambling account, Dumb. and with that, you're right. And with that Chevron deference, I would say the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, like, oh yeah, okay, your regulations did define it as this. It seems reasonable enough to us because, well, it, well, everything you do is pretty much reasonable. Uh, so that's one thing is that um, there's an easy fix to it. Why, assuming the Supreme Court would want to take this, mm-hmm. the fact is, is you would get you have bad facts here. They may uphold it. Why would you want this at, from the Supreme Court? The one F bar case they decide yep. goes against you. Now this applies to the Ninth Circuit only, right? Only, right. Okay. Now, now another circuit will look at this as a strong. Hey, look, they've already decided an issue like this. It's going to be a strong influencer, mm-hmm. but it's not binding at all on any other circuit. So if this is only the rule if you're in California, Washington, Hawaii, Alaska, uh, Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Nevada, Guam, hmm. Marianas Islands, and Arizona. Okay, so okay. outside of that, the law outside could. Of that, it could be different. Um, and again, the, the Treasury could just, from now on, write regulations. Oh, yeah, we're going to include it too. Because what about Bitcoin? What about Bitcoin? I know that's something, because that's going to be interesting. Because I could see that going a lot of different ways. Bitcoin is just so much fun. We do take Bitcoin, by the way. Oh, we do. We do take Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. Of course we would. Um, Bitcoin is a virtual currency. And the issue is, is it even foreign? Right. Is it even foreign? Because you can hold your Bitcoin. Your Bitcoin wallet can be on a flash drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you can have the same funds on a cloud as a backup. You can't spend them more than once. Once it's spent, that's it. It's gone. Right. So wait, if it's in the U.S. on you, mm-hmm. and then you might have it in the cloud, and the servers could be in any anywhere. Right. Is that foreign? And then the way, and, and I'm not the number one expert on this, but there's a blockchain where your information of the money you have is shared with people all around the world. Oh. So part of that information will likely be in the U.S. So it can't be completely foreign. Right. So. It, you know, can, you know, would, <laughs> would, if, would the courts uphold Bitcoin as a foreign currency if the regulations were written that way? Probably. Mm-hmm. Probably. Unless a judge has a lot of Bitcoin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then I don't think so. Maybe in 2050 this will be an issue. So, right. And so right now, and, and there's some guidance, they, they had some guidance about it, but not really a lot. Uh, I would say at this point, it's not a bank. You're holding a virtual currency. And there's not a crime to have. You know, as we, we sort of joked before, the pallets of cash, by the way, I'm watching the second season of Narcos, and again, more pallets of cash, no F-bar filing requirements on those pallets of cash uh, stuffed into mattresses mm-hmm. uh, in your warehouses, Okay. no F-bar requirement on that because it's cash. So it would be the, the, the more direct analog, I would say, if I was arguing the case, is the Bitcoin's basically like a, 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 pallet, a pallet of cash. cash. And no matter where that is in the world... I don't have to report the existence of that. That is, I think, the the, the better argument. Now, how you got that money, <laughs> you know, we're not going to get into that. Um, we're assuming if you got the money legally, if you're just holding it, it's like it's just it's it's just a safe of cash. Mm-hmm. A safe of cat, you know, safe full of cash is not a bank account. Having cash inside a safety deposit box that's inside a bank, it's not a bank account. It shows cash. What's storage space? In it's a storage space that's that's secure. I'm going to go turn the air conditioning up on my storage space. <laughs> it's a go. humid day here in Connecticut. It's a humid day. <laughs> I'm take How my, a day like today? I'm take my break. <laughs> so, what? But this is sort of you know I think that this we need to be protective and and we our clients with uh, with our clients that have online gambling accounts we file the F bars on. Oh, do you really? Oh, Just yeah, better safe than sorry. Just safe than sorry because these regulations can change and what happens if you miss that regulation change? 
and you haven't gotten the habit. So look, there's there's no harm in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and we we know that you know what we've known is that the IRS isn't auditing F bars. We've went through their entire practice units. Mm -hmm. F bar, there's no F bar you file that will trigger an audit. Okay, right. That's not what they're looking at. They only look at them for while you're audited under something else. By the way, did you file an F bar for this? Because now, if you haven't, we can penalize you. Mm -hmm. So it will only be used as a way to punish you further, not the trigger exactly. of an audit. Right. So that's really what it is. So there's really no harm. The IRS agents themselves, they don't really have great access to the F-bars because they always ask us, hey, could your client provide a copy of your, their F-bars they filed? Yeah, sure. So you guys you don't, don't have that? You don't have that? You don't have access to that? Uh, we could, but it would take a lot of work. You know, It's just going to take us months to get that. So if you could just get it. So there's just proof. So yep. I, our advice is just, and a lot of these things, we always tend to be safer than sorry because we see very little risk, if any, on reporting something huge risk for something that could just trigger on basically how a judge feels one day. Got it. Yeah. All right. Well, if you have any accounts you're unsure of, if you need any tax assistance, don't hesitate to contact us. 888-727-8796 or info at irsmedic.com. Your information is subject to the attorney-client privilege. Uh, you can like and comment below and subscribe to our channel for more awesome tax updates. Thanks for watching. IRS Medic, the law offices of Parent and Parent, LLP. Real tax attorneys for tough tax problems.